Yo, uh, <laughs> alright, let's see if we can fix this. First of all, Mola San Bonani, hello, how's it? Welcome to vlog 49. Uh, uh, it's going to be relatively short. Excuse the, <laughs> excuse the sudden darkness. I just had to clean the lens. Um, it's going to be relatively short because I, I just wanted to. Um, I just wanted to cap off, well, I just wanted to cap off, uh, what the hell is going on here? There we go. Uh, it's going to be relatively short because I wanted to cap off, uh, what has been a interesting heritage day. Or as I like to put it, Shaga's Day. That's right. As a proud Zulu, today is Shaga's Day for me. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> it's been a while, man. It's been a while since I've chatted to you guys. Uh, I've been incredibly busy with effectively the ground war. Sorry, there is a weird little beam. Let's see if this fixes it. No, it doesn't. What is that? That is a weird beam. It's like Scotty is trying to do something and beam me up here or something. Um, I don't know if you guys can even see that. It's like a little weird beam at the top there. Uh, but nonetheless, we, we soldier on. Uh, so yeah, guys, as I said, this would be a relatively short vlog. And I know I always say that and it becomes like a, a one-hour vlog. No, this one will be short. Uh, happy Heritage Day to those who celebrate that. And... To, the conversation I want to have here and the thought I want to share with you is exactly our heritage. What is it and what it isn't, right? Uh, because I think if, you, if you're a South African, then you're used to the shenanigans. Uh, sorry, I'm fiddling here. My, my bad. <laughs> um, if you are South African, I'm sorry, I feel so weird. Like I, I'm trying my level best to get the lighting right in here. <laughs> But let me just soldier on. In fact, I know exactly where to go to get some good lighting or decent lighting because I am on the road and um, that's partially why I haven't been vlogging as much as I have been. But maybe before I continue with all that jazz, can you guys just confirm that you can hear me clearly and that the sound is pashash? If the sound is pashash, then I will continue uh, with the vlog. But yeah, it really has been a while, guys. Uh, all right, thank you, Ren uh, Reno. Reno Borta. Thanks, brother. So, I I'm going to be brief because there's, there's two things I want to really chew on when it comes to uh, how we celebrate Shagas Day as South Africans, uh, excuse me, Heritage Day as South Africans. You've got to separate the politics of today versus who we are South Africans today. And as I say this, I'm going to give it a moment. Um, that, that's just a nice little, uh, to whip to your appetite, a, a little appetizer. Um, to let you know where I'm going to go with this, with this issue. Oh, yikes. There we go. I always take this, take it behind my back when I stop briefly to fiddle with lighting and all that. Let's put my belt on. Because I know how young will be in the comments. Why does Big Daddy not have his belt on? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Guys, I always wear my, wear my belt. Um, <laughs> but uh, as I said, just give me two or three minutes to get to a place where I know there's very good lighting. Um, and uh, I'm going to pick this conversation up with the little teaser that I've given you, which is there is a very big difference between... Uh, a heritage as we as South Africans with our traditions, our values, our culture celebrate versus the Heritage Day, which is shoved down your throat by the political elite in this country, the Blavity Blacks, the mainstream media, and essentially their other friends, the woke academics in this country. Very big difference between these two. And by the end of this vlog, not only will you understand that difference, but I'm hoping we'll begin as a nation to to call it out because it's absolute trash it's absolute trash um, so as I get to that and as I get to where I want to be that has the superior lighting or at least I hope 
Um, yes, look at that. How lovely is that, guys? Uh, <laughs> I'm actually just at a service station, so I don't think I'm in like some sort of juiced up studio or something, something like that. Uh, let's see if I can pick one of these little spots here that have a, a light. All right, here we go. This should be good. I hope. I pray. All right, so you guys can see me, I think. Um, ooh. I've got the worst acid reflux today. Um, like absolute worst acid, acid reflux. Um, all right, hang on. The lighting is not that good. <laughs> but with you guys having joined... Let me just, again, give you guys a quick shout out and say hi. Welcome to the Big Daddy Liberty Show. This is vlog 49. We are going to be very brief. There is, um, there is a very big difference between who we are on a day like Shara's Day or Heritage Day as a nation, as a country, um, given our faith, our flag, uh, you know, our, 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 our values as South Africans, um, our families and, of course, our adherence and our love and our, our pining for, for freedom. Very big difference. And, or rather, there's a very big difference between that and who we are in that sense and who politicians want us to be when they commemorate uh, Heritage Day, which they usurp for political reasons. And for them, the day takes on a, a purely political meaning. Nope, I'm not happy with the slighting. Um, very big difference. And you see it on days like these, right? In so far as here we are, South Africans, trying our level best to put on a happy face and not only put on a happy face, yeah. Put on a happy face. Let me leave it at that. <laughs> um, I'm going to hit this guy. Oh, coming into your parking bot, uh, spot, dude. Um, is this better lighting? Look, hey man, whatever. This is going to be <laughs> as good as the lighting gets. So let me just park properly and not be a doers. And then get the short conversation going. All right, here we go. So, uh... Okay, this is, this is the best I can do. I'm, I'm sure you guys can see me. Um, there's a very big difference between, as I said, yo, guys, I've repeated this like four times. Let me get straight to the point then. South Africans are desperate to live in a non-racial society. Uh, not anti-racist, as that nonsense by that uh, Kendi dude, that uh, blavity black woke academic from America and that crappy books that he writes. Um... Asinine, asinine critical race theory stuff, uh, but actually non-racial. That's what I'm referring to here. In other words, the, the skin color, your melanin, having little meaning in real terms on a social level, political level, and an economic level on who you are as a South African. That's what I mean by non-racial, but actually it is your, the content of your character in, in the actual meaning of that, um, that matters more than your race. That is what South Africans are desperate for, a non-racial society. But we can never have that. We can never have that because politicians in this country are dead set on South Africa being a highly racialized society. I've made this point before to you guys that South Africa since its inception by and large, it has never really escaped in terms of the, the political elite. Because you've also got to remember the creation of South Africa is a colonial project. project. Uh, South Africa really, as, as it stands today, as this one country, is a... Uh, it's, it's something that has be, be, been bequeathed to us, if you will, over the ages, since about 1910 or so, since the Union of South Africa. And it is wholly a colonial project. It was given to us by the British. Because if you want to talk about South Africa in real terms, South Africa is best placed, bla, blah, 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 best placed uh, being a basically various nations under one flag, if anything. Um, and that's why I'm deeply in favor of an incredibly federal arrangement for South Africa. But that's a, another topic for another day. Let me, let, me, let me break down the Heritage Day issue. 
big difference between who we are and what we want as South Africans, as citizens, as individuals. Culturally, we are distinct. We are diverse, and each region has always had its different cultural flavor. There is a difference, for example, between who Cape Townians are versus uh, Gauteng folks, right? Versus Durban folk. Um, and this is where you start seeing where even the, 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 the insistence by politicians to use race is absolutely nonsense and it's absolutely inadequate. Because I can take a colored, if you will, individual from here in Cape Town in the Western Cape and compare him to a colored individual in Johannesburg and those two people are completely different. Not only because they're individual, but because even if you wanted to use the race argument, they have no similarities culturally between the two of them. Or excuse me, there may be a few similarities culturally between them, but generally speaking, they're, they're two different culture streams insofar as the experiences that really shape who these people are. And if anything, you can make an argument that your region has a greater say about who you are than your actual race. If you really want to be honest about this issue, but I digress. There's a big difference between who we want to be as South Africans, uh, you know, desperate, and I mean desperate for non-racialism, desperate to move away from the society where anything and everything I say, anything and everything I do is always viewed through the lens of me being a black person, a white, a colored or an Indian. We're desperate to move away from this. Even though politically... Our politicians are desperate for us to hold on to this because like the Nats of apartheid, it benefits the Nats who are in the ANC, that is the African nationalists in the ANC, for us to view each other through a racial lens. It benefits them greatly. If we can stay mad at each other because of these arbitrary things um, such as race, then they benefit because they can literally loot, pillage, steal and kill South Africans and... We will not bat an eyelid because we're too transfixed on this thing called race that they shove in our faces. You see it in every layer and every level of society, from the policies that are shaped in this country, from the rhetoric of our politicians. You cannot tell me a policy like black economic empowerment or affirmative action is not racist. That is a racist policy. That is a racist policy. You may dress it up in nice language and you can dress it up in the language of, well, you know, you're, happy, you're, you're helping, in inverted commas, those who historically, from a racial perspective, were victimized. You may dress it up in that language, in that victim language, so as to disarm criticism of it. But in reality, it is racist policy. It is racist policy. It is absolutely racist. And it does not surprise me it does not surprise me that you'll have mostly individuals who are, who are immersed in victimology, racial victimology, who will defend the use of race in policy and simply argue that no, but at least this time we're doing it on, the, on behalf of the disenfranchised. I mean, the Nats were making the exact same arguments about white Afrikaners. They appropriated the language of white Afrikaners being a victim group in this country, by and large, right? That's how they appropriated the language of it, by basically arguing, you know, you know, we Afrikaners, they'll say, you know, we fought off the, the Brits, the Brits were the real oppressors, um, and that's why as we look to assume power, this is of course in the run-up to the 48th election, we'll enact legislation that protects uh, whites initially, and of course Afrikaners specifically as a racial grouping in this country, protect them both from the unfair uh, advantage that, you know, uh, English-speaking whites had, but more so uh, protect them from cheap black labor. So again, when I therefore look at ANC politicians today, and I can compare them to nat, nat politicians of the apartheid regime, and really, I can actually compare them also to colonial politicians of pre-apartheid South Africa, I see no difference in real terms. All of those sets of politicians are dead set on using politi uh, excuse me, race as a metric to delineate, <coughs> or rather, to pick winners and losers in South African society. That is literally what they do. So that for me, a day like Heritage Day kind of rings hollow 
when the politicians appropriated for race. It rings hollow. It doesn't register to me. Um, again, this is as, as politicians presented to us. Not as how we as South Africans want to celebrate it and choose to celebrate it. Because I'll make the argument now that there's a very deep, diff, uh, <laughs> sorry, there's a very big difference between how we South Africans have just reclaimed this day from politicians and versus how politicians themselves want us to celebrate this. What do I mean by that? Look at how we as South Africans have been desperate to the one, on the one hand, as Zulus, to remind and to reassert the idea that this is Shaga's day. This is Shaga's day. This is a day when we commemorated the greatest monarch that we had as a Zulu people, the guy who literally, the, the visionary, who united disparate groupings of confeder confederated clans and made them one nation, effectively, under a federal system, if I'm to be honest, under a federal system, but one nation with a standing army, the only, only non-European or non-Western um, nation to have defeated a full regiment of the English army. I'm sorry, I took a little bit of pride in that. Uh, <laughs> um, but there's, there's a reason why, for example, Zulus, Tina, as Zulus, we, we, we like to go, hey, you know, we remind you, this is Shaga's day. Or other South Africans then say, oh, you know what, this is not Heritage Day as it's shoved down our throats by politicians, this is Pride Day. Have, have you ever noticed how we South Africans, we do that? We try and take it away from what the politicians tell us it is, and we try and redefine it. Because we're so desperate to move away from what, what politicians are trying to do with some of these commemorative days, which is to drive the racial wedge in society. So we use all sorts of clever marketing and gimmicks just to basically redefine the day to reclaim it from politicians. Because y'all remember four, three or four years ago when, when the ANC and government took exception to South Africans calling this day Bride Day. Uh, this is not Bride Day. This is a day for us to remind you that whites are evil, blah, 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 and that blacks are victims, blah, blah. <laughs> <coughs> Ah, uh, remember that. They took exception to it and they got really pissed off. And people were like, no, 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 this is Bride Day. We're celebrating uh, this day as a day for us to get together and bride together. And that, that really pissed the ANC off. They're like, oh my goodness, these people are, are, are usurping this day back into being a day of unity and not the sort of day that they want it to be, which is a day of racial wedges, basically driving history as a wedge to divide people. Because you saw that today by the president. You saw that today by uh, Ramaphosa. Uh, a succession of tweets. And in fact, if you are a regular on my tweets, if you are a regular on the show, I told you that this is what he was going to do. This was a second prophecy, if I can call it that, that I've called, called spot on, which is there's going to be a transition now from effectively the cliques race, race saga uh, and, and race, the faux race scandal that we saw in this country. And there's going to transition smoothly to continue that campaign of dividing us racially and dribbling us from the real issues by now going to monuments and statues and other issues as the next area to play the race division game. Because you heard what your damn president said today. Oh, yeah, you know, we need to remove monuments of the past that remind us of apartheid and blah, 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 blah. How is that anything vaguely relevant to us right now as South Africans, given the state of the economy? Three million people lost jobs under this lockdown, facing ever-increasing poverty. How is removing statues a, a priority right now, whether it's Heritage Month or not. Hey, guys, I keep saying to you, don't be dribbled. Don't be dribbled by these people. So, let me conclude. Let me conclude and let me wrap up the point because I think, um, I, you know, as I said, I didn't want to really make this a long one. This is just me and my little musings today. <laughs> And the things I was thinking about as I commemorated Shada's day and I thought about my people as Zulus, where we're going. 
and how it's important for us as South Africans to fight for the things that actually really matter insofar as who we are as South Africans, our identity. And I'll say it to you this way as I conclude. Today is not about your race and it should never be about your race. Your race says nothing about you. Let me repeat that. Your race says nothing about you. Me calling you white, black, Indian or colored is irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. What matters is your faith, who you are on a spiritual level, and how you then use that and those values to relate to the world around you. Who you are and what matters is your adherence and your love for flag. And when I talk about flag, you know, of course, I'm talking about the South African flag, but also there's a lot of flags that we fly as South Africans, right? There's a lot of flags that we fly as South Africans, when we look at our true heritage, our true heritage, I fly a Zulu flag at times, no? I fly, um, or some South Africans fly uh, a Botswana flag. Uh, others fly a, you know, like you can go down the line in terms of actual identities that, that say more about who we are than, than race, who you are is your family. Critically important. The family is the first institution you are, you are uh, socialized in as an individual. It's more important than the state. It's more important than the state. And there is no family, no sane family at least, that socializes you through a racial lens. Welcome to the world, little white, white baby. No one says that. Welcome to the world, little black baby. No one reasonable who is sane here in the head says things like that. Instead, it's welcome to the world, little Ngobese, Ngongebe, Delagbosa. Welcome to the world, little um, Janse van Rensburg. And how that name, Janse van Rensburg as a surname, has a history to it. These things are important, more important. Our families are more important than this notion of race. Welcome to the world, little Mudli or Naidu. You have a history to you and this family and this name. Take pride in it. Build on it. Bring glory to it. Welcome to the world, Mr. September. Ironically enough, a lot of these surnames in the colored community either take on months or you know, other names, forged in, in pain in some cases, but in others, in others, a community that just defined themselves, either because of their various and diverse backgrounds, the Cape Malays, for example, um, those who are of Nguni origin, Dutch, English, name, you name it. But they take on these identities that then formed what we, that we today call and broadly call Khaled. That's not a distinction of, of their race. It's their culture that matters and the diversity of it. Anyway, I, I digress. And how these cultural values are inculcated to you through family, which is the area I was, I was, I was dwelling on for a moment. And the values we draw from that, much more important than this faux adherence to race. And of course, the last one is, is freedom. We often don't talk about it, but it's so critically important. Freedom is exactly what allows us as South Africans to be able to freely define who we are. Freely define who we are. Away from the negative influences of the toxic influences of the blavity black types and the social justice warrior white types and the political elites, the, the work academia and the mainstream media, all of whom that toxic coalition that axis of evil, if I can steal from Bush's expression, all of those uh, in, uh, groupings are dead set on driving you apart using race. So that it's those four things, guys, that really define who we are. Our cultures, our values, our identity. And that your race really isn't important. Let go. Let go of it. Let go of this weird obsession with trying to stand for a race. Because I see it from all sides. I see it from all sides. You have white South Africans, for instance, and I use that expression just to, uh, to be generic. Um, 
and just for the purposes of this conversation, you have white South Africans who believe their identity as whites is tied to apartheid. So you have these guys in my comments who try and defend apartheid. I'm like, why are you doing that? There's no need for that. Just like I today, as a black South African, you'll never catch me dead defending the ANC. Even though I know there are black folk and a majority of them in the voting pool at least who defend the ANC and vote for the ANC, it's not my place to ascribe that, to defend, if, if, if I will, excuse me, my race in lieu of the ANC. It's not your place to do that also for apartheid. Let go of race. <laughs> I don't know how many times I need to say this to people. You are not your race. I can sit and have a drink with an Afrikaans chap and we can have so many similarities. We can have so much more to talk about than race. Guys, fight for something much deeper, fight for something much more meaningful and move away from this weird obsession which is used by politicians. As I said, it's, it's, a, it's a crooked gaggle of polit politicians, their political elites, the woke uh, academia, the mainstream media, and effectively the various activists in this country. Very crooked elite. And don't think this is all happening by chance, by the way. It's at times dangerously coordinated at a political level by these people because they need to continue to drive the wedge between us, to divide us, to have us be suspicious and careful of each other. Vulgar, wake up, you're being dribbled. You're being dribbled by people who are obsessed with us continuously being angry at each other. But anyway, let me leave it there uh, and say thank you very much for watching. Uh, maybe in the comments, let me know what you think about that. You know, that, that those two differences between who we are as South Africans, as citizens, as individuals, as families, versus who the politicians want us to be on a day like Heritage Day. Where I argue that we as families, as individuals, we're desperate just to, to have that human connection. That human connection based on things that are our values, our culture. We're desperate for that. We're desperate to connect with each other. And race has nothing to do with that connection. We, we, we are bore it as South Africans in real terms. We are bore it. And I've given you examples of how we're so desperate just to redefine things away from what the politicians want us to focus on, which is usually race. So that when you're actually able to look at who we are as South Africans and the work that I do, for example, I am more optimistic it's a long road ahead, don't get me wrong, but I'm more optimistic that I can win South Africans on my values and my ideas of liberty, free markets, and essentially the focus on the individual and families. I'm more confident that I can win that fight because of who we are and our values. And that things like socialism and communism, I'll say this, and this is my, my, my takeaway from this. State socialism has no place in the South African identity. It has no place in our values. It has no place in our history. It has no hold over our lives. Absolutely no hold over our lives. If anything, we as South Africans are a people of faith, flag, family, and freedom. And it is those values that I argue are more open to my ideas of a non-racial, prosperous, liberty-leaning, and market economy that elevates the individual, elevates the family, and really suppresses the politicians and the blavity black types and the social justice warrior white types. And as she says, you guys take a corner for a moment. And how about we as South Africans prosper? We live in a free society, prosperous society. That's why I do what I do. It's my confidence in those four values that I argue are shared by all South Africans. And why I will face the arrows, I will face the, the hatred, I will face the death threats in order to go into every single community that I can to spread these ideas. I told you guys, I gave up my middle class life, if I can call it that, you know, living in Johannesburg in order to travel around this country to do this work of getting these ideas into our communities. And that, yes, you know, it's not glamorous. You know, most of it is me just literally going door to door in townships and informal settlements, talking to people, spreading ideas, having engagements. 
and watching people literally go, whoa, we can actually view the world in that way through a liberty lens, through a market lens that benefits me and not politicians. It's fascinating to watch people begin to, to believe in these ideas and to want to be zealots for them. That's the ground wall that I'm working on. And of course, meeting various community radio stations and saying, hey guys, here's a new idea. Here's the show that I produce. Put me on your platform. Put me on your platform. It's different. It's classically liberal. It's conservative, as Americans would say. We don't have that kind of stuff in our media. So those are the two things that I'm literally doing. And those are the things that you're supporting. For those of you who are supporting me, it's me being in communities on the one hand, but also trying to negotiate with all these local radio stations, wherever I may be in that part of the world. At the moment, I'm in the Western Cape, Cape Town. So guys, put the Big Daddy Liberty Show on your platform. Syndicate it so that people can hear these ideas. And in that regard, I'm going to be in Cape Town uh, up until the end of October. Then I begin to trek up uh, basically the end two. As I hit the garden route, uh, I'll be in places like Nisna, Muscle Bay, and George for a while, maybe uh, you know, two or three days in each place. Uh, then I move up to Jeffreys Bay, PE. Uh, then I move in a little bit to the former Trans Sky. You know, spend between five, three and five days in each of those places that I'll be in. I'll communicate exactly where I'll be. And then I move up into your Cockstads, uh, uh, Port Shepston, and head up to Durban. And there, I'll be there for quite a while. KZN and Zululand generally, I'll be there for quite a while. Quite a while. And then I'll move up to other pl uh, parts of the country. Again, the whole point in this ground war that I keep talking about is going into communities, the very communities that people don't want to go into. And it's funny, I, you know, you go into like an informal settlement or a very dangerous uh, township like Enyanga here in Cape Town, the murder capital of South Africa, and you walk around and some people look at you like, hey man, you sure you want to be walking around? <laughs> um, and I'm like, yeah. I actually am sure I want to be walking around because if you call this place home and you live with the reality of the high crime rate and the danger and all that, pray God, do tell, why shouldn't I be here to face the same thing that you're facing? If anything, I'll be here to share ideas with you around how we can change this as South Africans. And then it's up to you as the South African. After you've heard the ideas, you've liked the ideas, and you want to stand for them, the liberty ideas, it's up to you uh, to then rally those around you at a political level to effect the change that we want in this country. That's my heritage. That's what I'm fighting for. It's that God-fearing, law-abiding, and family-orientated South African, defined by his or her faith, flag, family and freedom. That's the South African who I'm fighting for. What are you doing to change your country? Guys, we have a country to win. We have a country to win and to reclaim back from these crooked pol pol uh, politicians. And I'm doing the work. Like I've, this, I've told you, I'm devoting my life to this. This is what I'm going to do with my life. And for those of you who are for those of you who are supporters of this channel and supporters of my work, I don't take you lightly. I don't take you for granted. I really don't. Anyway, I can see some comments here. Um, and I'll get to the comments just now. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, let me end it there. Let me end it there. Except to say just a few comments. Uh, Lucanio, thank you so much, brother, for the super chat. I see you. Um, I saw a comment there from Stefano Semprini. I actually know that guy. Um, shout out to you, dog. I don't know where you are in the world now. Um, but yes, South Africans are very God-fearing. South Africa is a 96% Christian country. Very devout people in this country. Large Muslim population here in the Western Cape and really in the rest of the country too. And of course... Um, 
a, a, a closely knit and strong Jewish community too. So it'll be foolish. And of course, my Hindis. Hey, man, let me not forget my Hindi folk. Um, you know, someone who grew up nearly forgot y'all. I didn't, you know, I'll never forget y'all. Um, it'll therefore be very foolhardy of us to pretend that South Africans don't draw... Uh, it'll be foolhardy for us to pretend that South Africans somehow don't draw uh, in terms of their values from their faith. Of course they do. Of course they do. And the argument I'm making is it is these faith, it is these values, if you will, that cut across these different faiths that actually South Africans find commonality in. Look at how we, in this country, we, we live harmoniously with each other. Other countries are struggling, man. Other countries, Jews and Muslims can't live together. Other countries, Christians and Muslims or Christians and blah, blah, blahs can't live together. Yeah, we live together because we know that it's not the religions that divide us. It's the values that we draw from them that actually unite us. So, yes, when I say faith, flag, family, freedom, I mean it. I actually mean it. But, um, yeah, guys, let me, let me call it there. And uh, say thank you for watching this vlog. I'm sorry if I haven't been vlogging or even putting out episodes in a while. I really have been super busy. Like I'm working in the communities of Nyanga, um, Kailicha, Luzuko Park, Mitchell's Plain. I'm moving into Delft now. Um, as I begin to ramp up really the ground wall, which is just basically sometimes rock camping area and going door to door. Hey man, locking on the door. Can I talk to you for a moment about liberty? What do you think about these ideas? Um, some people think I'm a politician. I'm not. Um, and no, I'm not going to be asking for votes. This is not me setting up some grand scheme for, for a political party. It's, it's nothing like that. It's me basically saying, you've got to win the battle of ideas in this country if you're really going to change it. It's no use saying, oh, Big Daddy, you've got to stand as a politician or let me vote for this guy or that guy. If you don't change the climate of opinion in South Africa, in other words, the ideas that are pervasive in society, then you're going nowhere. Whether you choose my money or you choose Herman Mashaba or Ramaphosa or whatever, if you don't change the climate of opinion, in other words, the actual ideas that are found in communities, then you won't win. And that's what I'm doing. It's to move communities towards liberty ideas, free markets, market type ideas, and of course, faith, flag, family, freedom. That's my mission. That's how I change my country. What are you going to do on this Heritage Month? So with that, let me say, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Remember, you can support me and my work. Find me on Patreon, uh, just search Big Daddy Liberty. Find me on PayPal by using my PayPal email address. That's uh, Big Daddy Liberty Z A at gmail.com. I'll put all of that in the descriptor and the links. I always forget to do that. Um, a simple dollar a month is all you need to support me and my work. With that being said, guys, thank you very much. I will see you uh, possibly next week, if not a, another vlog sometime this week. Because this weekend, there'll be no show. Uh, it's Yom Kippur, which uh, for us as, as Jews is, yeah. Um, hey, man, we, we, we're in a very critical time at this moment. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so I'm going to see your homies next week sometime. And uh, yeah, man, we have a country to save. And uh, remember, never trust a commie.